This is a CBS News special report. Good morning, and what a shot we have over launch pad 39A here at the Kennedy Space Center this morning. The moon hung up there like uh, a lantern at somebody's garden party, and what a sight it was uh, helicoptering in here to our CBS News studios this morning to see the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia out on the launch pad, uh, absolutely starlit sky, and that moon hung up there. Everybody is optimistic and very hopeful that the launch will get off this morning uh, on the new time, the new time being uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Now, this was the scene as the astronauts had breakfast just a few minutes ago. The astronauts got to uh, sleep in a little late this morning. They were awakened at 5.10 a.m. Eastern Time. Told this is a live scene from the breakfast room. Several persons eating with the astronauts, among them John Young, who commanded the first flight of the shuttle Columbia. Some of the new astronauts. The director of flight operations here at the Johnson Space Center. There's a happy birthday sign in the breakfast room. You can see it back there because this is Dick Truly's 44th birthday and you can imagine how uh, hard he's hoping that the uh, shot goes as scheduled today what a 44th birthday present uh, that would be for him the flight commander Joe Engel is uh, 49 years old trying to pick up a little bit of this uh, sound and let's see if we can pick it up it is mandatory that we have return customers to ensure your satisfaction we have thoroughly checked your engines filled your fuel tanks changed your tires checked Checked your generators and electrical system, touched up your paint and vehicle finish, toppled up your heating and cooling systems, replaced your brake shoes, <laughs> checked your hydraulic system for leaks and performance, <laughs> thoroughly checked your steering system, checked your lights and instrumentation gauges, installed some scientific games to eliminate boredom, <laughs> cleaned your windshield, packed some lunches, Position your vehicle on the driveway for a safe trip. Please have a safe, enjoyable, and trouble-free trip. We like to have repeat customers sign Big George and Company. <laughs> Mike Lounge leading that uh, to the uh, astronauts who hope to get up this morning, Joe Engel and Dick Truly, uh, Dick Truly's 44th birthday, and uh, that sign back there saying happy birthday and Truly saying, quote, I'm going to have the biggest birthday candle I ever had, and indeed, if it goes off the pad this morning, uh, that's exactly what he will have. I certainly hope he doesn't try to blow out the candles, Dan, <laughs> on this flight. <laughs> Leo Krupp uh, is... Our longtime helper on these broadcasts, Leo Krupp with Rockwell International, uh, an experienced test pilot uh, who's made uh, many of these launch broadcasts with us. Bonnie Dunbar, astronaut uh, with the uh, National uh, the Space Administration, back with us again this morning. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning. Uh, nice line, Leo. I hope he doesn't try to blow out the uh, candle on that <laughs> <laughs> birthday cake, of course. Uh, those uh, pictures coming to you live from inside the breakfast room. As I mentioned, uh, the astronauts uh, were awakened this morning later than uh, astronauts for most launches are awakened. Usually they get up around uh, 2 a.m. Eastern time in the morning uh, of the launch. But today, keep in mind that the original launch time scheduled for 7.30 a.m. today, Eastern time. But uh, then the difficulties with this black box began to develop uh, late yesterday, and so it was pushed back. The launch time now scheduled for 10 a.m. this morning, Eastern time, of course, 9 Central Time, 7 uh, in the West. And so the astronauts were awakened shortly after uh, 5 o'clock, about an hour ago, then went into their breakfast meeting room. And uh, you, as you can see, everybody seemed to be uh, loose, optimistic, and having a very good time, all the more so because it is Dick Truly's 44th birthday. Now let's talk about what the problem was, very briefly. A multiplexer deplexer unit is an important link in the shuttle's complex internal data communication system, and that was the problem. Now, Bonnie Dunbar, in brief, uh, what happened and how they fixed it? Well, we have uh, almost 20 of these units on the vehicle. They uh, accept data from various sensors. Uh, they put it as, as much like several lanes of a freeway coming together into one lane, <laughs> okay? Uh, this was in a system called orbiter instrumentation. It's a series of pressure temperature sensors on the vehicle. It's not the critical flight system, but it's information we use on board. Uh, we had one of the ports that collects that data, a secondary redundant port, 
uh, fail or apparently fail uh, and, and we were trying to understand that we changed out the unit twice we flew in a new unit it's it's almost an off-the-shelf type unit it's kind of electronic equipment you see in uh, many types of industries including television they put the new unit in and it's operating fine uh, we have the redundancy we wanted we would have had the data anyway but this uh, uh, allows us now to have the capability and the assurance that if one of those systems fails we have this on board now, in brief, let's take a look at the uh, model of the space shuttle. Everyone by this time, I think, fairly familiar with it. This is what you see on the pad. This, the orbiter itself. These, the two solid fuel rocket boosters to help get it off the launch pad. This, the big external tank, the main fuel tank. Now, what we're talking about where the difficulty was, was in the cockpit area of the orbiter itself. So let's take the orbiter off, show people where this was, and what it was. Now, in the orbiter itself, of course, the astronauts up in here, keep in mind that there are two decks in this area. There are two decks. There's an upper deck and what's called a mid-deck, but is, for our purposes, the lower deck. Now, this is filled, absolutely filled, with very sophisticated equipment. To give you an idea, inside this area, there are 300, 300 major electrical boxes, 300 miles of electrical wiring in the space shuttle, 1,000 valves and 2,000 dials and switches. Now, that gives you some context of this particular black box problem. Now, of the 300 major electrical boxes, this one was located where, Bonnie? Well, it's located on the mid-deck area, which is the lower deck area, and it was located on the right side of the vehicle next to the airlock, which, if you open the payload bay doors, is the, the method by which the crew gets back and forth to the mid-deck. So it was accessible uh, to the crew uh, had there been a problem in orbit, uh, and it was fairly easy to change out. Uh, we, all these black boxes are called line replaceable units, which just means that we can change them out. It's like a bread box. I think we perhaps take a moment for those uh, who want to be re refreshed in their memory. These payload doors open up. In fact, matter of fact, they must open up. And the astronauts do have the ability to come from the cockpit area back in here. Uh, yeah, they will eventually. We do not have a planned uh, extravehicular activity, as it's called, EVA, uh, for some time, but uh, they have access later on. This, this, pe this black box is still inside on the lower deck. Now, we're also being joined this morning, as we uh, have been right along for our coverage, uh, our C by my CBS News reporting colleague, Morton Dean, and astronaut Paul Weitz. Right now, they're in what is called the 1G trainer cockpit used by the crew for training at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Good morning, Mort, and perhaps you can uh, tell us a little more about where the box uh, was, I should say is, because the new one's in place now, and uh, what it does. Good morning, Dan. Uh, Paul and I are in the cockpit. We're upstairs in what amounts to a uh, three-story uh, building, and uh, downstairs is that mid deck you were talking about, and that uh, just below the mid-deck, uh, you can lift up a couple of panels, I believe, Paul, and find those black boxes somewhere in there. That's correct, Mort. Basically, they're under the seat in which I'm sitting in a little aft, but on the deck below, as you said. Black box is a term we uh, hear quite often when we talk about aviation and space, and uh, I'm told there are some, what, 200 black boxes on board the space shuttle Let's begin at the beginning. What is a black box? Well, a black box is a term that I think has been around for a long time in aviation. It refers basically to any electronics component. They typically, in the old days anyway, and a lot of them now, come in a, uh, have a metal case that has a, 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 a dappled black finish on it, and it uh -huh. came to be known as a black box. And they, they basically are any electronic or, as we call, avionic unit, Mort, that is, uh, it's also referred to as LRUs, which stands for a line replaceable unit that is something that's accessible uh, and can be replaced on a component basis it's extraordinary to me uh, Dan and Bonnie and Leo and Paul we got a big crowd this morning that uh, in, in, in the space agency refers to things usually by acronyms or by names uh, that most of us can't follow and yet you have something so important referred to as simply uh, as a black box I well, say hooray for the people who have done that Paul <laughs> Well, Dan, uh, we're a little bit disappointed. Paul was under the misguided impression that you folks would be in this, the crowded confines of a cockpit uh, this time, and we'd be down there uh, having the luxury of a big office and a picture window looking out uh, on, run, on the uh, 
launch pad 39A. And uh, Paul and I were discussing before that we just about got rid of uh, astronauts' uh, stiff neck from our last appearance here. <laughs> but uh, we'll give it a whirl again today. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, and uh, Paul Weitzen uh, uh, at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. We'll be coming back to you often this morning, of course. As we will be going often to uh, another of my CBS News reporting colleagues, Walter Cronkite. Walter, good morning. Good morning, Dan. Well, and the little black box morning. gave them trouble yesterday. Uh, they flew what, uh, I'm not sure that we've uh, explained exactly what they did. Uh, they had trouble with uh, the box yesterday, then they had trouble with another one, one of these 300 electrical boxes uh, aboard the space shuttle. They decided to cannibalize the uh, space shuttle, uh, the Orbiter Challenger, which is under construction uh, by Rockwell International at Palmdale, California. And they took uh, a couple of boxes off of Challenger, flew them in here last night. No, you can appreciate this, Walter. When they got them in here, one of the people who was offloading them from the airplane said, don't drop it, don't drop it. <laughs>